Before I get into this, if you just want to skip to the part where I save the processing profiles, you can go ahead and jump to the giant time code that's on the screen right now. I am going to spend some time going through editing this image because all of the edits that I do will be applied to the processing profile. Then we'll be able to open a second image and apply that profile to that image and we'll be able to see the results. But if that's not something you're interested, go ahead and look in the description or look at the time code of the video. I've gone ahead and put the chapters there. So you should be able to jump around to the point of the video that you most want to see. So let's real quick edit this image. I'm gonna first come up here to this I, which is information, and I'm going to tick that off because I don't wanna worry about that information. So now that I've gotten rid of the information, I'm gonna come up to the processing profiles and change from last saved to neutral. And this resets the image back to basics. There's, there's nothing applied to this image. You can see that uh, before I had the last saved processing profile and it had this curve on there to kind of give some contrast and brightness, but I want to just start from nothing. So I'm going to go with neutral. And then the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the transform tab and under lens and geometry, I'm just going to tick on automatically selected. And what this will do is every time I apply this processing profile, it will just automatically select the lens correction. If I go ahead and do it manually, then it will apply this manual lens correction. And I don't want that because I may shoot with a different lens or a different camera. So I'm gonna do automatically selected. And then I'm going to come first here to the tone curve. And I'm gonna pull the highlight slider down just a hair. And I'm going to pull the black slider up just a little bit, okay? Now let's go ahead and give a nice S curve. And we're running into a little bit of a problem because our flower is backlit. So I'm gonna bring this point pretty far down here. I'm gonna bring this point pretty far over. The reason that I pulled the white and the black point a little bit away from the extremes is because I didn't want anything to be completely black or completely white. That gives this a little bit more of a film look as opposed to as opposed to more of a crisp digital look. It kind of softens things out. Okay, next I'm going to bump up the contrast a little bit, and then I'm also going to bump up the lightness, and this is really gonna help out. And then I'll come back and bring this back down. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next, I'll move here to the sharpening. And in order to see the sharpening, I'll zoom in to one to one and find, let's see, it seems like this part of our petal is in focus. So let me increase the sharpening to maybe 400. It's very subtle, but there is sharpening there. Now I'll zoom back out by hitting the crop to selection tool. Next, I'll go to the vibrance and turn that on. And I'll turn on protect skin tones just in case in future uses of this processing profile, there are people in the shot. And I'm just gonna increase the vibrance quite a bit. Now I'll go back to my exposure tab and increase my saturation a little bit. And then I'm going to apply the soft light tool and I just really like the way that this makes the image look. The base amount is 30, and I usually find that to be very pleasing to the eye. So now we've done kind of a basic edit. But to make this more apparent, I'm gonna do one more thing. And that is here in the HSP equalizer. I'm gonna open up the value equalizer. And I am going to increase the value of the reds and the yellows. And I'm going to get rid of the greens. Actually, I'm going to get rid of everything but red and blue. And I'm going to decrease the value of the blue. That might be too much. Let's go like that. Okay, so there we have it. Now that I've made my image corrections, I'm going to come up here to this processing profiles panel. And I just hit this little save icon. And if you hold your mouse over it, it says save current profile. And it also says control click if you want to save certain profiles. 
So if I control click, you can see that now I get to choose which profiles I save. So for instance, if I had wanted to mess with the exposure on this, and then I didn't want to save the exposure, but I wanted to save all of my other edits, I could just control click and then choose everything, but not choose exposure and then save that. So let me reset the exposure and I just want to save what I currently have, so I'm going to click Save. And I can choose where on my hard drive I want to save it. Now I will say that Raw Therapy chooses the folder that it looks in for processing profiles, so if you do choose to save somewhere else, uh, you're going to have to open that up on your own. It's not going to be in this list, this drop-down list. So we have this uh, name here, and I'm going to call this something like uh, Punchy Flowers. And I'll just click Save. Now I want to point something out real quick. If you open up your browser and then you type in Rawpedia, there's this Rawpedia page which is all the information about raw therapy. It's created by the makers of raw therapy. If you go into the Rawpedia page and you go down to this file paths link, in here is all of the different file paths and what you want to look for is the custom config and cache folders. So right here on Windows this is where the config folders are uh, and the cache folders and then here in Linux and Mac OS this is where the config folders are and you want to look for the config folder so if you have a Windows machine you can take a look there and this is important because if you are moving processing profiles or importing processing profiles from other people then you need to import them into this folder but like I said before, when you hit the save button, Raw Therapy automatically chooses that destination as a place for you to save. And you can see that I saved my .pp3 processing profile and it is saved under the name Punchy Flowers. So now if I come up here to the list and I go to my profiles, we see Punchy Flowers. So let's go ahead and open up another image. So here we have another image of a flower and I just created this wonderful profile that works really well with flowers. I'm going to come up to my profiles and click punchy flowers. And now you can see that my tone curve is applied. You can see that the sharpening is applied. You can see that the vibrance and even the HSV equalizer curve is applied to my image. And so now all I would really need to do would be to mess maybe with the exposure a little bit, maybe mess with the black level a little bit. And I don't know, maybe I want to add some color toning or something like that. But the majority of the work is done. This is a really easy way to speed up your workflow, create something that you really like that you can apply across a ton of images. But it gives you more versatility than a LUT would because LUTs are just applied across the image, but you don't get all of the processing numbers and tools that were used. You don't get any of the background information.